Good morning to you on this Tuesday the 13th of April 2021. My name's uh, Reverend Jo Richards and Rector here in Canterbury of St Dunstan's, St Mildred's and St Peter's and welcome to you on this beautiful spring morning although somewhat cold. So it's Easter season and our morning prayer is, uh, is for the Easter season so O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory for ever, as once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made, and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast. Not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God and Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Our appointed psalm for today is Psalm number 8. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honour. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading today is continuation of the book of Deuteronomy and it's chapter 1 and it's verses 19 to 40. Then, just as the Lord our God had ordered us, we set out from Herob and went through all that great and terrible wilderness that you saw on the way to the hill country of the Amorites until we reached Kadesh Banara. I said to you, you have reached the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord our God is giving us. See, the Lord your God has given the land to you. Go up, take possession, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Do not fear or be dismayed. All of you came to me and said, Let us send men ahead of us to explore the land for us and bring back a report to us regarding the route by which we should go up and the cities we will come to. The plan seemed good to me, and I selected twelve of you, one from each tribe. They set out and went up into the hill country, and when they reached the valley of the Eshkol, 
they spied it out and gathered some of the land's produce, which they brought down to us. They brought back a report to us and said, It is a good land that the Lord our God is giving us. But you are unwilling to go up. You rebelled against the command of the Lord God. You crumbled in your tents and said, It is because the Lord hates us that he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to hand us over to the Amorites to destroy us. Where are we heading? Our kindred have made our hearts fail by reporting. The people are stronger and taller than we are. The cities are large and fortified up to heaven. We actually saw there the offspring of the Anakim. I said to you, have no dread or fear of them. The Lord your God who goes before you is the one who will fight for you, just as he did for you in Egypt before your very eyes and in the wilderness, where you saw how the Lord your God carried you, just as one carries a child all the way that you travelled until you reached this place. But in spite of this, you have no trust in the Lord your God, who goes before you on the way to seek out a place for you to camp, in fire by night, and in the cloud by day, to show you the route you should take. When the, Lord, when the Lord heard your words, he was wrathful and swore, Not one of these, not one of this evil generation, shall see the good land that I swore to give up to your ancestors, except Salab, son of Jephaniah. He shall see it, and to him and his descendants I will give the land on which he set foot, because of his complete fidelity to the Lord. Even with me, the Lord was angry on your account, saying, You also shall not enter there. Joshua, son of Nun, your assistant, shall enter there. Encourage him, for he is the one who will secure Israel's possession of it. And as for your little ones, who you thought would become booty, your children, who today do not yet know right from wrong, they shall enter there. To them I will give it, and they shall take possession of it. But as for you, journey back into the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea. And now for our canticle. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise, the God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils, the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. And by your invincible strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. And our second reading is again from John, and it's chapter 20, and it's verses 11 to 18. This is our gospel reading from last Sunday. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid them. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, 
Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and she said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had seen these things, had said these things to her. Of course, that wasn't last Sunday. It was uh, Sunday before Easter. Last Sunday was Thomas. And now for our responsory. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first root of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? And now for the Benedictus. The Lord is risen from the tomb who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who's come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come together on this beautiful morning, we hold very much in our thoughts and prayers today our Queen and our Royal Family as she continues to mourn the loss of her dear husband, companion and soulmate, Prince Philip. We pray for all those who are preparing for the funeral for all those family and friends who loved him and cherished him. And we pray for all those who at this time are mourning the loss of loved ones. For the family whose funeral I took yesterday and for those who are continuing to, uh, to plan for funerals of loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, on this day, we continue to pray for our young people, for those who are anxious about their schoolwork, your students wondering quite when they'll go back onto their campuses, for those who are preparing for exams or assessments, again, uncertainty, for them at this difficult time. Lord, we lift to you all young people known to us and all those you know so well, O oh Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue this day to pray for our world. We pray to those for those places that concern us, that concern you, O oh Lord, where there is rife, warfare, famine. 
We pray particularly for those charities that work so hard at a grassroots level. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue at this time to pray for our church. We pray for Justin, our Archbishop, for Rose, our Bishop, for Joe, our Archdeacon, and for all those lay and ordained who minister to others. We pray for those who help out with one another, for those who pick the phone up and say, how are you? For those who are perhaps sharing tea in a garden, we give thanks for the listening ear and the practical loving support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to this day to pray for all those who are struggling in body, mind or spirit. For those on our benefits prayer sheet. For those who specifically ask for prayer at this time. For those who are awaiting hospital appointments. For those who are awaiting surgery. For those who may be waiting for a diagnosis or treatment. We live then to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give thanks for this day, for the bird song and for the blossom, for the sun that's shining and that sense of spring and hope is in the air. Heavenly Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for today. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love and pray for, for this day and always. Amen. Thank you as ever for joining us this morning. It's always good to know that we're worshipping together. Tomorrow for morning prayer, my colleague John Morrison will be leading both morning and night prayer. And our 10 o'clock Eucharist at St Mildred's tomorrow will be a, uh, in commemoration of the Duke of Edinburgh. So uh, do join us if you can in person for that service. Otherwise, please do join me for night prayer at six and John in the morning at nine. God bless and goodbye. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.